Hey everybody, I'm Sari Custer and this is Sari on Science for Arizona Science Center. Today you can tell I'm not at the Science Center because I'm out and about and I'm probably in one of the best kept secrets in Arizona. I'm down in Patagonia, Arizona at the Tucson Audubon's Patent Center for Hummingbirds. And this is, again, one of the best kept secrets because there's amazing world-renowned bird watching that happens here and they're well known, you guessed it, for hummingbirds. We're gonna see a bunch of stuff and the team's got me all tricked out so let's go take a look around. All right, this place is incredible. And lucky for me, I had a personal tour from amazing conservation biologist, Jenny McFarland. Hello, I'm Jenny McFarland. I'm the conservation biologist for the Tucson Audubon Society. So this is the Tucson Audubon Society Patent Center for Hummingbirds. And it's a lovely nature center that is open to the public. Uh, people can come here and come and view many, many birds. We have uh, 233 species that have been documented here in, uh, at ebird.org and many, many hummingbirds. This place is famous for hummingbirds, especially the violet crown hummingbird, which is a rare species for the United States. And this is the most reliable spot in the entire country to see violet crown hummingbirds. All right, it is absolutely beautiful here. And since it's the end of monsoon season, that's why it's so lush, green, full of flowers, and absolutely beautiful in this meadow. That also means that there's a lot of food here, hence the reason why this is peak hummingbird season. Okay, so we've been following Jenny around all over the patent center here. And Jenny, we've got bird feeders all over. Can you hear? Yeah. You know, and, and we've already got visitors all over. Tell us, you know, why are the feeders here? Give us the details. Sure. So there's a lot going on here. These are some busy feeders here at the, the patent center. We have native plants with feeders. But man, the hummingbirds, they sure love the feeders. So they're filled with sugar water. It's a simple solution of sugar water, one to four. So one part sugar to four parts water. And if somebody wanted to do that at home, that's, you could make yeah. it the same way. Okay. It's a super simple recipe. You just take white table sugar, mix it with four parts water. So like one cup of sugar to four cups of water, just sort of mix it, maybe heat it in the microwave a little bit, let it cool, put it in a clean hummingbird feeder. And that's all they need, just some sugar water. And now we've seen a lot of species today. How many different species of hummingbirds are there uh, here at the Patent Center? So the Patent Center can get up to, you know, anywhere from 11 to 12 hummingbird species in, in a given year. Now, Southeast Arizona every year regularly has 13 species of hummingbird, up to 16 of some of the rare ones that don't turn up every year come in a summer. And that is really, really high for the United States. It most parts high. of the country, yeah, most parts of the country have one or two species and Southeast Arizona has the most hummingbirds of anywhere in the United States. That's incredible. I love it. I know we've seen a ton today and they've been absolutely stunning. Oh, they're gorgeous. They're such great birds and they will come right into your yard, which is fantastic. You know, anywhere in, in Southern Arizona, Phoenix, Tucson, any of those areas, if you put out some native plants and a hummingbird feeder, you'll most likely get hummingbirds right in your yard. I'm reminded today why hummingbirds are so special. They're tiny birds, weighing only a few grams, or really the equivalent of a few paper clips. And the biggest one I saw today was only about five inches long. They're super fast, and their coloring is exquisite. Matter of fact, hummingbird coloring comes from structural color, not pigment. And just earlier this year, scientists released findings showing a better understanding of how special structures called melanosomes on hummingbird feathers reflect light to give us that beautiful iridescence. One thing I didn't expect, though, was to notice how aggressive the hummingbirds are with each other. So we had to ask our biologist, Jenny, why are they so aggressive? So it seems strange that hummingbirds would be so aggressive on a hummingbird feeder when there's plenty of food for everyone to share. But hummingbirds are more used to natural flowers that um, it takes up to 40 minutes for a bead of nectar to form inside of a blossom. So a patch of flowers only has so much nectar within a given hour. So they really do need to defend it from other hummingbirds to make sure that they get enough food. And that behavior translates into feeders. And I guess that's not a surprise when you think about how much energy these little birds need. They're extremely fast, agile flyers with wings beating up to 100 times per second. They've been clocked at over 30 miles per hour and they're the only vertebrate to sustain hovering in flight, plus they're the only bird that can fly backwards. 
Now, to sustain all this and avoid starvation, hummingbirds eat about half their weight in nectar and insects per day. I would bet that if you had the same requirement, you'd be protective of your food source too. And it's not just the hummingbirds trying to get to the nectar on these feeders. Okay, so one of the cool things I've learned so far today is that this little cup of water actually has a function. It's called an ant moat or an ant guard. So it actually helps prevent the ants from crawling down into the feeder and eating all the nectar. Not only are there ant moats, there are also these cages around some of the feeders. Can you guess what they're for? In Southeast Arizona, we get a lot of nectar bats, especially this time of year. Early spring and late summer, you get these nectar feeding bats like the endangered um, lesser long nose bat and the Mexican long tongue bat that come in and they love nectar too. They are totally drawn to hummingbird feeders. They can smell them a mile away and they come in and they will drain a feeder overnight. Now we let them have most of the feeders, but we put cages around a few of the feeders so that there's still food for the hummingbirds in the early morning. With so much food and habitat available, hummingbirds definitely seem to love this area. Matter of fact, all birds seem to love this area. I was shocked that we spotted more than 55 species of birds, or at least our trained professional birders did. Birding is still new to me, but I was trying really hard to find them in the trees. This is definitely challenging. I'm impressed with how easily uh, all of our birders are able to identify these birds. It's really hard to see them so far away and they've got it like that. Okay, now just because it's hard, don't let that discourage you. The challenge is all part of the fun. Birding is a really popular, fun activity. Lots and lots of people do birding. It doesn't take very much to get into birding. Uh, you really just pretty much need a book or an app on your phone and a pair of binoculars. And that's really all you need to get into birding. And it's such a fun activity you can do anywhere. You know, you can do it in your own yard, you can do it out in the wild, and you can also do it places like this in, at a nature center in uh, you know, a suburban small community in Southeast Arizona. I'm pretty excited I got to see all these beautiful hummingbirds today. And I have to agree with Jenny that birding is one easy way anyone can get outside and just start doing some science. All right, guys, that's it for our visit here at the Tucson Audubon's Patent Center for Hummingbirds in Patagonia. I had a great time, and I hope you did too. And now I'm off to take some pictures of butterflies. We'll see you next time with more Serion Science. Thanks again for watching today, everybody. A massive shout out and thank you to our friends at Tucson Audubon Society. Learn more about what they have going on at TucsonAudubon.org. For more great science videos and to learn how to visit Arizona Science Center in person, visit azscience.org.